Are you looking for more information about what all the HubSpot free CRM can do? Well, you're in the right spot. Today, we're gonna to walk you through all of the free features available to you in HubSpot CRM free and give you a preview of some of the paid features as well. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. As you're gonna quickly find out, the HubSpot free CRM has a ton of features. So we're gonna walk through as many, of, as many of them as we can, as quickly as we can. Just know that we've got lots of videos on the HubSpot Hacks channel that walks through these features in a lot more detail if you're looking for information on exactly how to set them up. So with that, let's dive in here. Right now we are looking at a contact record and the first thing that you need to know about the HubSpot CRM is how it stores information and the types of information that it stores. So the CRM is really gonna be based around four different types of records. Contacts, which is all the people you have in your CRM. Companies, all the companies or organizations you have in your CRM. Deals, which is information about all the open sales processes you have. If you're familiar with other sales uh, CRMs, you may have heard this as opportunities. HubSpot calls them deals, basically the same thing. And then service tickets, which is all of the customer service issues and support issues that you're working through. And you can associate all of those records together as necessary. So contacts associated with the company that they work for, for example. So for all of those records, they're gonna have a very similar layout when you're looking at them in the CRM. The left-hand side is gonna be all of your properties about them. You can customize your properties. On the free version, you can have up to 10 custom properties. You can also edit which properties show up on this left-hand side. And for all the rest of the properties, you can click view all properties and it'll show you a list of all the information you have about that contact. So that's on the left-hand side. The center here is going to be what I call an activity timeline. So any calls you've logged, emails you've logged, forms they have filled out, if they visited your web page, et cetera, all that information is gonna show up in the middle. And then on the right hand side is mostly going to be for associations. So we can see that Michael is associated with the company Weber and Sons, and we also have an open deal associated with Michael Weber and Sons Q3 order. No service tickets at this time. If we click into any of these records, you'll start to see very similar layouts. We've got Michael Thompson, this is the contact layout. If we click on the company he's associated with, again, basic information on the left, activity timeline in the middle, and the associations on the right. So in this case, we've got 10 contacts in the CRM, all working for Weber and Sons, and we've got three deals associated with that company as well. These activities is going to be the kind of other type of information that HubSpot stores, which is the activity that you're doing with all of these people, contacts, and companies. So we've got different activity types. You can create a note, you can create an email, and when you're creating an email, you can either just log and say that you sent an email, or you can actually send emails from inside of your CRM. And if you're using Google email or Outlook, you have an extension that you can download and you can send an email from Gmail or Outlook and still have it log inside of your CRM as well as all the replies that people make to that, etc. Calling, if you're on paid features of HubSpot, you can actually call from inside the CRM just like with email. If not, you can still just log the fact that you made a call. You can create tasks, we'll talk about a lot more here later on. You can schedule meetings, which will show up on your calendar and their calendar as long as you've got your Google or Outlook calendar synced up with HubSpot. And there are other types of activities you can log as well, like SMS messages, if you send on postal mail, WhatsApp, et cetera. So those are all the activities. And the great thing is that if we log an activity with Karen, it'll show up on Karen's record and on the company record and any deals that Karen's associated with. So wherever I go to find the information, I'm gonna be able to see it. So now we're gonna walk through the navigation bar. We are demoing from an enterprise version of HubSpot, so some things might look slightly different for you, but they should all be roughly in the same spot here. So our first dropdown is gonna say contacts. It's a little bit of a misnomer because it's more than just contacts, and we'll show you that here. The first thing is contacts. This is gonna give us a list of all of the contacts we have in the CRM we can do a lot on here. So by default, it's gonna show us all the contacts. We've got 320 records in here. Let's say I only wanna see contacts with a phone number. So you've got these filter capabilities. Any property inside of HubSpot you can do filtering on. So phone numbers here, I could type in if it wasn't so easy for me. And then let's just say is known. Apply that. Now I'm just seeing all the contacts that have phone numbers in here. So we've got 270. We can also adjust the columns that we see here. So under actions and edit columns, there's other information that's important to you. Like I like the last contacted date. 
so that we can know the last time we reached out to them. And you could sort on that, for example. So show me all the contacts based on, you know, put the ones at the top that I haven't contacted in the longest. Uh, once you've got your views customized, if you know you, that's a view that you want to come back to often, you can save it, pin it across the top, saves you some time there as well. And we can click on any contact record. It's gonna go back into that object um, view that we looked at earlier with the information activities and associations. Also in this contacts dropdown, you can go to your companies. It's gonna look very similar, same functionality as contacts. We can do our filtering, edit our columns, save our views however we'd like to. Calls, when you're on the uh, starter version or higher and you can make calls from inside of HubSpot, you can also record those calls. Some of the more advanced versions of HubSpot do have um, the ability to do transcriptions and automate tasks and things like that. That's all gonna be managed under this calls tab if you have those available to you. Target accounts are gonna give you some features for account-based marketing. So you can label which ones you're doing account-based marketing on. That's gonna be a marketing pro feature or higher. Custom objects is really gonna be for enterprise if there's additional information, types of records that you wanna store that don't match up to contacts, companies, deals, and tickets. You could create custom objects. We've got a couple in our test portal here for shipments, distributors, etc. You kinda of get the idea there. Very advanced use case. Most people aren't using custom objects. Activity feed is gonna be a place where you can go to get all the notifications that you would have in HubSpot and be able to see it all in one spot. So what contacts that are assigned to you fill out a form, which one's opened your email, et cetera. Most people don't use this because you're usually gonna be looking at the objects record or the place where your notifications are being sent to, like your email, et cetera. But it is a handy tool if you like it. Lists is gonna be very similar to a filtered view of contacts that we mentioned earlier. So you're gonna set filters and it's gonna create a list of contacts based on those filters. The difference though between a list and a saved view is lists are gonna be essentially lists of contacts that you're gonna be using later for other things. So the most obvious example is whenever you send a mass email from HubSpot like a newsletter, it's gonna ask you what list you wanna send it to. In the free version, you have five active lists and up to a thousand static lists. So active lists, you're gonna set the filters. Anytime somebody meets that filter, they're gonna be added to the list. As Soon as they don't meet that filter, they'll be removed. Static list is gonna show you all the people that meet your filters at the time you create the list and never change. So if I wanted to create a list of everybody that lived in Colorado and I've got 10 people in my CRM listed as living in Colorado, I can create an active list. It's gonna show me those 10 people. If I add an 11th person from Colorado, then I'll have 11 people on that list. If I would have done it with a static list, and when I add that 11th person, they're not gonna be added to the list because it's only at the point in time I created, it. so it's like a snapshot. So those are lists. In our conversations tab, we've got a few tools. Inbox is a really cool feature if you've got a shared email address, like a contact us at your company.com or a support at your company.com. It's also uh, puts in communications from other channels into your inbox as well. So let's say you've got a shared support email address and you've got live chat set up on your website, which I'll show you here in a second. You could set it up so that all of those communications come right here so the people managing those communications can reply to them. And with the paid versions of Service Hub, you can even do really cool ticket automation. So creating tickets, closing tickets, et cetera, based on what's coming in here. But essentially it's gonna look a lot like an email inbox. I can read, read things in here, I can assign them to people, I can respond to them. And again, it's not just email, live chat, Facebook Messenger, et cetera, can all come right into here. And that's all available for you on free. Chat flows is going to be that, um, that live chat that I just mentioned. So if you wanna add an option to do live chat in your website where somebody can click on the little thing on the right hand side at the bottom and chat with the live person, you've got the availability inside of the free CRM. You can also do some basic chat bots. So where you prompt them with a question and they select an answer, for example, you can do some basic things there with free. That does get a lot more sophisticated on the advanced ones as well. But as you're creating one here, we'll walk through all this, but we'll to put a new live chat on our website, live chat, or you've got some of the bot option options here. And this is kind of what it looked, what it would look like on your website for those website visitors. We also have snippets and templates. I'm gonna start with templates. I think they're a little bit easier to understand. So with the free version, you get five email templates. These are gonna be one-to-one -one emails. So uh, if you are typing an email in Google and you find yourself copy-pasting, maybe it's um, 
like a trade show follow-up or an introductory email to a cold prospect and you're using similar language all the time great use case for templates you get five in the free version and you can do things like personalization tokens so it pulls in their first name etc the way that it works is if you're going to email somebody from inside the crm or if you've got that extension tool i mentioned with um, google email or outlook email you can uh, populate the templates from either of those places. It'll show you the template before it sends so you have a chance to edit it um, and customize it however you'd like before you actually hit send. So that's full emails. Snippets are usually going to be used for like little components of emails. So let's say there's a sentence that you use in emails all the time or even in notes that you log in the CRM, uh, you, can, um, you can save it as a snippet. And so the way that it works is you put like a couple sentences of text here and then a quick shortcut. And now anywhere inside of HubSpot that I type hashtag shortcut, it'll populate with whatever text I have up here. So again, just another time saving tool, not as much copy paste going looking at it or having to retype the same thing over and over again. In our marketing tab, we've got, you guessed it, lots of features that makes your marketing easier. So ads is going to tie to Google, Facebook, and LinkedIn are the platforms it can tie to. You can create ads from the ads tool. You can also get reporting about your ads in the ads tool, whether you created them in HubSpot or the tool. And you can do some cool things with audiences, such as you know if you wanna do the retargeting where you're running ads to everybody that came to your website last month, you can manage that from inside of HubSpot as well, even just with the free version. So here is um, a platform that has some ads running. So we can see we've got some consolidated, re consolidated reporting across platforms where they're running ads. So across all of the ad campaigns that they're running in the last 30 days, 18,000 impressions, 98 clicks with a nice cost per click calculation, 28 new contacts with a nice cost per contact calculation. And when we get into some of the professional and higher versions, we can get some more advanced ROI reporting around this as well. So very nice tool with the ads and they give you a lot with the free version. Email, so this email tool is going to be for our mass emails. We already talked about how you can email instead of a contact record or use your, your Google or Outlook extension. This is gonna be more similar to like a MailChimp or a constant contact where you're sending emails to a list of people, like maybe with a newsletter. This tool is going to allow you to send up to 2,000 emails per month on the free version. Your limits go way up from there as soon as you get into the paid versions. And let's just open up the simple strap portal here. So you can see we sent out a HubSpot Hacks newsletter. If you're not on that list, there's a link in the description below. Definitely recommend getting on the HubSpot Hacks newsletter list, all kinds of HubSpot tips and tricks we send out there. But when you open, so this is gonna be a list of all the emails that we've got, both drafts and the ones that we sent. If we open up any ones that we sent, we're gonna get some nice analytics about how it performed. And when you create it, you're gonna have some basic drag and drop features available to you to create emails on free. We'll just clone this one to show you what that's like. Only gonna be able to do automated emails on the free version, or sorry, regular emails on the free version. Automated emails come with some of those paid features. But we're already in the email builder here, so we've got this email built. It's very simple drag and drop builder, so if I wanted to add an image, for example, I just come in here, add it where I want, upload or select an image that's already uploaded and I'm good to go. One of the little things I really love about the email tool instead of HubSpot, is if I wanna edit this text, I just click here and edit away. I don't have to look at another text box and, and things like that and that gets really confusing for me and other email tools. So small thing I really like here. And then you can adjust you know, your settings, what your subject line is, etc. And you pick your list of people that you would send it to. If you've got a list of people you don't wanna send it to, you set all that and then you can either send it or schedule it to send later. So that's gonna be our email tool. Landing pages, again, in the starter version, we've got some basic drag and drop landing pages. I'll put up another portal that's got some built out here. So this is gonna be an example of a simple landing page that you could build on the free version. Show you what it looks like kind of live here. Very similar building process to the email. I've got drag and drop functionality. I can edit any text, set my page title, meta description, etc., all here. So landing pages, and then you can open up, just like your emails, you can open up any of those landing pages that you've got already published and see some nice analytics about how they're performing. Social media, uh, so with the Pro Marketing Hub Pro or higher, you get some social media tools. It'll allow you to schedule posts, just like a Hootsuite or a Buffer. You also get a lot of reporting around the posts that you've got on your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn. 
website. You can actually host a website on the free version of HubSpot. It's gonna allow you to build a website up to 25 pages. I should mention for your website pages, landing pages, email, anything that's kind of public facing on your free version, it is gonna have some HubSpot branding on it. So it's gonna say something brought to you by HubSpot.com. If you have the starter version or higher, it removes all that HubSpot branding. So you can do uh, website pages again, a website up to 25 pages for the free version. Basically the exact same process for building those pages as the landing pages. Uh, blog is also going to be somewhat similar. You can have that driven by different templates or themes that you download. Um, so I'll show you what that edit process looks like on the Simple Strat blog. This is gonna be based on a template that we already have in here. And we can come in here, it's taking a second to load, we can come in here and edit this text however we would like to. And we also get analytics about how those blog posts are performing, just like with the landing pages. So once they're published, we start to get those analytics. And that's gonna be a pretty common feature throughout HubSpot is having those analytics. HubSpot's really great about telling you how well things are working. So we talked about the blog, SEO tools, um, SEO recommendations for how to optimize your pages for search, that comes with the professional version or higher. Campaigns allows you to get consolidated reporting around multiple assets. So let's say you've got a landing page and an email and a form and maybe a second email all around the same goal and you wanna get reporting across all of those assets. Campaigns lets you do that. That's gonna be a pro feature or higher. Files and templates, all of the images that you're uploading, any um, uh, page templates with like code and things like that that you're uploading, that'll live here. Lead capture. CTAs are also available with the pro version or higher. These are like little ads or buttons you can put on your website to maybe promote um, a piece of content, like a case study or something like that, and you want people to download it, you can promote that um, with CTAs. And uh, HubSpot's going to make it easy to build those out, but also see you know what your conversion rate is, how many people viewed it, clicked it, et cetera. Uh, get that reporting around CTAs that's pro or higher. Forms is available to you on free, and you can do a lot with forms. We do have a video that walks you through exactly how to do um, everything that you can do with forms and how to do it all. But we'll walk through a quick little um, example here. So we've got this request for quote form. Let's just go ahead again, we've got our analytics. Let's go ahead and edit it. So any properties that we have about contacts, companies, etc., we can add those as questions here. So let's say we wanted to ask what city they were from. We just drag it over and we can do that. We've got options around making them required, et cetera. Once we've got that form set up, we can embed that on a landing page, on a HubSpot web page. You can also embed it externally. So if you've got a WordPress website, Squarespace website, et cetera, where you wanna embed a form, you can do that um, from, you can embed the HubSpot form. When anybody fills it out, completes it, they'll add that contact record for you directly inside of your CRM. So no more of that manual data entry, which is super nice. And on the free version, you can automate one follow-up email. So if you wanna send an email that said, hey, we got your form, we'll be in touch soon, et cetera, you can do one automated email on the free version. You can also do pop-up forms and slide-in for, slide forms if you want something that's not just static on your website. So that's going to be everything for the marketing tab. The sales tab is gonna have lots of features to make your sales team operate more efficiently. So deals, we talked about deals a little bit. You can view deals the same way that we viewed contacts and companies with adjusting the columns and saving the views and, and adjusting the filters. But most people like this board view. So this is gonna show me all of my open deals. If I click on a deal, it's gonna show me that similar uh, record um, format that I'm familiar with from what we went over earlier. So information, activities, and associations. And I can also get a little bit of insight about my deals. So when the last activity was, when the next activity is scheduled, what the amount is. And as I'm working my deals, let's say for Weber and Sons, uh, we, we made the presentation, now the decision makers bought in, we can adjust, we can just slide it over and now we know that it's at this milestone in the process. These deal stages are very important. We do have a blog post that talks about this, some videos that talk about how to set these up. It's very important that you get these um, matched with your sales process. There's a couple best practices around how to do that as well, but these will essentially be the main milestones in your sales process, and as the deal progresses, you'll move it through there all the way to the point that you win that deal. When you move the deal to close one, HubSpot's gonna record that revenue for you and give you a bunch of reporting around how these deals are progressing as well. Forecast is a sales hub pro feature or higher. Get a lot more insight into upcoming deals. You know, what's, what's my pipeline looking for next quarter, et cetera. Uh, tasks, 
Tasks are one of most salespeople I know's favorite feature inside of HubSpot. Helps you get reminded about things that you need to do. So creating tasks, usually that's gonna be done from inside a contact or company record. Just open up Ryan here. A couple different ways to create tasks. I can either just create, click this create a task button and type in you know, the title information. Is it a to-do, do they need to call them? Uh, is it a task for myself or do I want to assign it to somebody else on my team? So that's the most common way to create tasks. HubSpot also makes it really easy to create follow-up tasks. So let's say I gave Ryan a call and I'm gonna log that call inside of HubSpot. But let's say I wasn't able to connect with him, I just left a voicemail. But I really want to talk to Ryan. So if I don't get a call back in a few days, I wanna give him another call. So HubSpot gives you this create a task to follow up button. It's gonna to default to three days, but we can adjust that to one week. And now when I log this activity, it's going to log the, that I called Ryan, but also create a task to follow up with him. So nice feature there. When I've got tasks created, I can come into the sales and tasks to view all of my tasks. I can do similar filtering and saved views as what I showed you with contacts and companies earlier. But what I really like is let's say, let's say these were a list of tasks to call these people and I wanted to just run through this list. I can hit this start task and it's gonna run through this list for me. I'll show you what that what I mean by that. So it's gonna open up the contact associated with the task or company of its company. Um, and now I've got all the information I would need to call Ben. If his phone number is over here, I've got his phone number. I've got all of the history of past activities I've had with Ben, anything that he's associated with. Once I'm done with this task, I can hit complete and next. And it's gonna to go to the next task that was on that list pull up the associated contact, pull up the task information here, and I can just buzz through all of my tasks very quickly that way. So one of the features that I really like about HubSpot saves people a ton of time. Documents is gonna be used for things like sales collateral, so flyers, pricing sheets, data sheets, case studies. You can upload up to five with the free version, and HubSpot's gonna give you analytics into how people are viewing those. So if I've got a sales process open with Bob, I send him a price sheet, I can, and I've got that price sheet uploaded in documents, I can actually get notified when Bob clicks on that and see that Bob spent five minutes on that, for example. Meetings, so meetings is gonna allow people to schedule a meeting with you. It's gonna be tied to either your Google or Outlook calendar based on settings you set and your availability on that calendar. People can book a meeting with you. Very similar to Calendly, if you're familiar with that. You can email somebody, include your meeting link and say, hey, please schedule some time on my calendar. That's gonna open up for them and they can see what your availability is book a time slot, they're not already in your CRM, it's gonna create that contact for you, it'll add that meeting to your calendar, it'll send them a calendar invite, and it'll log it to their activity. You can have it send reminders, um, you can integrate it with Zoom and have it uh, populate a Zoom meeting link, lots of things you can do with meetings here. You'll get one link with the free version, and you can get more links for different types of meetings with the paid versions. Payments is going to be a feature that becomes available at Starter. You can actually collect money through HubSpot. So say you close a deal and you wanna collect that money through HubSpot via ACH or credit card, you can use HubSpot payments to do that. Playbooks are going to basically give salespeople a walkthrough of what they need to do on a call, so what questions to ask, script, et cetera, you can use playbooks for. But that is gonna be a pro feature or higher in the sales hub. Quotes is a tool that you can use in free. You get much more capabilities to customize them in the paid versions. But quotes are, this is gonna be a list of quotes that are typically gonna be created from inside of a deal. So if we open up a deal here, we can add a quote. It'll walk me through selecting a template. What products do I wanna to add to that quote? What are the price of those products? And then I can send this quote directly to the contact associated with this deal. And if I've got payments, if I'm in one of those paid features, I can add a payment link. So they can just pay that quote um, directly from a link on the quote there as well. So nice, nice handy feature there. Service Hub, the only feature that's available in the Service Hub and the Service uh, Navigation here on free is gonna be tickets. But a lot of the Service Hub features live under conversations as well. So tickets, you're gonna notice right away, very similar to deals. And these are gonna be how I'm keeping track of open customer support issues. So customer says, hey, this isn't working, open a ticket, uh, and I leave that ticket open to track all my interactions around that support inquiry until I resolve their issue and move it to closed. So just like deals, I can have a list view or a board view. I can drag tickets uh, to different stages of my customer service process as needed and I can open a record at any time to see the information, activities, and associations there. 
These other ones are gonna be available in Service Hub Pro or higher. Feedback surveys, just like it sounds, customer satisfaction surveys, NPS surveys to your customers. You can uh, set those up and send those to customers inside of HubSpot. Knowledge base is similar to a blog. It's gonna be all of your customer support articles, your help articles, and you can actually link that up with a chat bot if you've got the pro version or higher to help people kind of self-serve and answer their own questions via a chat on your website. Customer portal is a web page that your customers can go to to create tickets and they'll show up in your ticket pipeline. They can also see the status of any tickets that they have opened and any past tickets and respond to any communications if they don't wanna use email or something like that. They could see what you've responded to on their ticket and they could reply in there as well. Automation, all pro or higher. One of the main reasons people upgrade to pro is for automation. Sequences is gonna automate one-to-one -one communication. So let's say I interact with somebody at a trade show and I want I really wanna have a conversation with them. So day one, I'm gonna have a sequence, create a task for me to call them. Day two, it's gonna fire off an automated email. Day five, if I haven't heard from it, it's gonna fire off another email. They reply to an email or book a meeting with me through the meetings tool, they automatically get removed from that sequences. So great way to make sure that you're doing the follow-ups that you should, um, a great way to actually engage with more contacts. Workflows is gonna be great for things like lead nurturing and also things like, um, let's say when I move a deal from this stage to this stage, I wanna update this property or I notify this person on my team. Pretty much any automation you can think of, you can do it with workflows. Countless examples of things you can do with workflows. And again, that becomes available at the pro version or higher. You get different workflow tools available depending on which hub. So marketing hub's gonna give you some features, sales hub's gonna give you some others, etc. Reports, you do get analytics tools inside of free, but only around forms. Analytics tools groups similar reports around a specific topic like customer service and sales and shows you essentially a pre-made dashboard of reports there. Dashboards are gonna be dashboards that you make. You can make up to three dashboards on the free version and up to 10 reports per dashboard. So this is an example of a dashboard. We've got some pre-built reports that we can add to this dashboard to get all kinds of analytics about how our marketing assets are performing, how our sales team is performing, etc. And then all of those reports are gonna come from your reports library. So when you create a new report, you're gonna have access to a bunch of pre-built reports that HubSpot has made already for you. So it's 276 of them in here. With the paid versions, you can start to get into some custom reporting if you can't find a pre-built report that works. And we do have a, a, a video all about how to set up dashboards with those reports if you wanna dig into that in more detail. Data management is going to be a paid feature that allows you to manage your data cleanliness a little bit better. And then CRM development is for some of the customization things that you can do, again, on some of those more advanced versions. So that is a walkthrough of all of the features that you have on free. I know we went through a lot and I know it was fast. I don't expect you to be able to use all those features. So please check out the rest of our HubSpot Hacks videos. If there's an in-depth tutorial you're looking to get, wanna learn more about any of those features, good chance we have a video. If not, please reach out to us. Be happy to do a free consultation or create a video for you. Um, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel to get any future HubSpot hacks that we have. That's all we have for today. See you next time.